studying in Ephesians chapter 2 and uh, verse 14. It's really just five words. Ephesians 2 and verse 14. For he is our peace. For he is our peace. And uh, I'd remind you of the words that we read in the New Testament lesson where Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace give I unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And it's useful to r remember what the peace was that Jesus had, that he did really see that before the world was ever created, in him his father had gone through the life of not only just every individual that has ever lived, but had gone through the life of every insect. And had made them all inside Jesus and had allowed them all to do their thing. And then had put his miraculous, loving and gracious heart into the middle of all of that and had felt it all and had borne it all and then had one by one, step by step, but in him just in a millisecond, had corrected everything. And Jesus had that peace. He looked out on the crowds that at times shouted insults at him. He looked out at the bodies that were dying of leprosy, and he knew peace inside that all of that had been fixed. And that was some of his peace. And that is the peace that he has and we in him have that reality. I think what's really important, just at this point, you know, in our conversation, it's really important that you see that we're not saying, you have to make that peace real. You have somehow to make that peace real inside you. You have somehow to repeat that, yes, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Yes, and I'm in Jesus, and Jesus is in me. Yes, I must have the peace that... No. It's not, it's not all that self-effort or that juggling of thoughts, you know. It is simply a fact that the reality is that all the knots have been untangled. That's the reality, that all the knots have been untangled. The reality is that peace is what actually reigns. And that what we see out here is a picture of what it was before there was peace. But that it's peace that reigns. And that as we go into this afternoon and into tomorrow, the peace has been wrought. Now, I'd ask you, would you have a look at the strains in your own heart or in your own life. You, you, we can think of them all, you know. All of them, some of them for ourselves, some of them for others. Do I see all Trisha's sales, because I love her, do I see those all as Christ sees them, all already achieved? Or have I still some strain? Oh, she, she, has to, she has more to enter into. Now, uh, w what does she, what do you think of them? But I'm just taking her as an example. Joe, uh, Rini, uh, Joanne, Greg, all the little things inside our heads and our hearts that are not really at ease 
in spite of the fact that in reality they have been eased. In reality they have been solved by our Father in Christ. And that's what I think. we've to receive today. It's what each one of us has that we can enter into. N not by straining, not by striving, not by doing a job on ourselves, not by auto-suggestion, not by trying to imagine what it could be like, but to deal with this issue that actually he is our peace. He himself is filled with the peace of our lives that have been redeemed and resolved. And he is our peace. And that peace is ours. That is reality. That is reality. And I don't know if you see it, but it really means what I tried to pray, I think, early on in the service. That tomorrow you could, maybe, I hope you won't, but you could drive into something with your car. And if you did it, the Father could have stopped you doing it. And if he allows you to do it, he has the whole thing sorted out already. And if you say to me, well, I mean, I could end up lying in bed with maybe my arm broken or with pain. Yes, yes, if it was God's, if it was the will of the Lord to bruise him, it certainly could well be the, Lord, the will of the Lord to bruise us. But in the midst of that, you would be at peace. In the midst of you would rest. In the midst of it, the pain would be transformed. And you say, what about the death? <laughs> the death would be wonderful. Going to sleep and rising in the beauty of the morning. But it seems to me that is the reality that is in Jesus. It is in that way that he is our peace. And therefore, we are able to live in absolute peace and quiet. And that's what it means. He is our peace. He sees everything as it really is, resolved, completely solved, completely redeemed in himself through his Father's work. And that is where we live. That is the reality for our lives. If you say to me, you mean we dum-dums are living in deception? You got it. <laughs> That's exactly what we're doing. We're living in the midst of lies, you know. That we reinforce all the time by looking out at all the things that seem to be instead of just keeping our eyes simply and continually on him and on reality. He is our peace.